Welcome. We're glad that you're here. I believe that our service will bring glory to God and peace and joy to your heart and to your mind. I want you to know that whatever you are going through, whatever you are enduring, that God is bigger and stronger and that God loves you with an eternal love. Draw close to God, especially today. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Our prelude was entitled, Like the Murmur of the Dove Song. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website and our Facebook page. Tell your friends and neighbors and offer a comment. Thank you very much. Our voluntary is entitled, Listen, Sweet Dove Unto My Song by Gordon Binkert in celebration of Pentecost Sunday. George Herbert in Whit Sunday wrote, Listen, sweet dove, unto my song, and spread thy golden wings in me, hatching my tender heart so long, till it get wing and fly away with thee. Lord, though we change, thou art the same, the same sweet God of love and light. Restore this day for thy great name unto his ancient and miraculous right.
Our hymn is Every Time I Feel the Spirit. If you have a hymnal, please follow along. It's on page 404. May is Older Adult Recognition Month in the United Methodist Church, and Bethany is a stronger and a more loving church because of our older adults. I want to thank you for all that you do for Christ and for Bethany and in our community. Our prayer thoughts today are taken from a prayer by the Reverend Tracy McNeil Wines of Clarendon United Methodist Church in the Arlington District. Let us pray. And as we begin our time of prayer... I invite you to lift the names of those older adults who have helped you throughout your life, help light the way for you in your walk with God. Creator God, the hope of every generation. We give you thanks for the older adults in your church, and especially here at Bethany. We celebrate their past, the passion and the imagination that took root in their lives as they served Christ in the church and in the world. We celebrate their present in all their places of influence and for their gifts of wisdom, energy, and love. And we celebrate their future the mentoring and the support that they are giving to new generations now as we work side by side and who will look to their model of leadership and service as all of us continue to serve you. Lord, bless their labors and experiences in this time of life. Guide their steps. Sustain them throughout their days by the power and love of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. This weekend also marks the sad one-year anniversary of the 13 people who died, including the perpetrator, and the four people who were injured in the shooting at Municipal Building Number 2 in the Princess Anne area of Virginia Beach. Please join me in a moment of silence and prayer. God, we pray today for the families of the slain and the injured, for the men and for the women who were first responders, and the support personnel in the aftermath.
We pray for the family and the friends of the perpetrator. And for all who were and continue to be traumatized. And for the Virginia Beach community and for all Virginians. Dear God, heal our people. Heal our land. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for submitting your prayer concerns throughout the week. Let's go ahead and remain in prayer as we pray for Scott Bartley, the uncle of Tiffany Bartley, undergoing cancer chemo treatments. For Joseph Forrest, the uncle of Lisa Gale, who has terminal cancer, Lisa is a caregiver. For Michelle Brown, the sister of Regina Berry. For Denise Liverman, who has buried both parents in the past six months and is going through a divorce. Thanks to Linda Fletcher for letting us know about her friend Denise. For Angie Williams, the mother of Doe Breen for cancer and chemotherapy appointments at Johns Hopkins earlier this week. For William Lee Adams Jr., the brother of Ann Bird, in Barrington, New Hampshire, who has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. For Minneapolis, Minnesota, and for the riots and the unrest in that city. For Mary Poland, who has a broken clavicle. Good to report that she has very little pain. For David Lewis, for his next round of scans this upcoming week. And congratulations to John Hasty for a wonderful recognition with an award for excellence and service by the Boys and the Girls Clubs of the Virginia Peninsula Gloucester Unit Board. Congratulations, John, from your Bethany Church family. And now, loving God, we pray for ourselves and for those persons and circumstances that you have placed on our hearts and our minds this day. Lord, hear our prayers as we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our anthem today is Be Still My Soul by Steve White.
God doth undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Thy hope, thy confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul, the waves and winds still know. His voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Thank you, Steve and Rudy. I want to share some announcements. My first announcement today is of some staff changes. It is with great sadness that I must inform you that Dee Dee Wyke, our office administrator, has shared her plans to leave Bethany to pursue other opportunities in the private sector, effective June the 1st, 2020. Dee Dee joined Bethany in 2014. She has been an integral part of our church and our staff and contributed greatly to our success and our progress. We will all miss Dee Dee very much. I know that I will miss working with her. Please join me in thanking Dee Dee for her service and her dedication over the years and wishing her well in the future opportunities that the Lord has for her. We will be posting the position of office administrator immediately. Please be patient as we work to fill some pretty big shoes. We also received the resignation of Joy Wyke, our nursery coordinator, on May the 14th, as she will be pursuing a position in line with her college degree and her profession. We thank Joy for her service and her spirit, her care for our little ones, and we're glad that we could help Joy gain some experience here at Bethany as she pursues her dreams and God's call upon her life. Please also extend your appreciation and thanks to Joy. The Staff Pastor Parish Relations Committee is the ministry at Bethany that is authorized and tasked with oversight and equipping our church employees and for their ministries. We will meet this week to review these two positions, as well as the open positions of the Director of Youth Ministries and the Director of Children's Ministries. I want to thank you in advance for your understanding and for your patience 
as we pray and work through all of this in this safer at home time in our community and in our nation. I also want to announce some officer changes. These were sent out by email to our council members and the responses were unanimous in the affirmative. All of these are effective June 1st, 2020. First, I want to share good news and sad news. The sad news is that our treasurer, Marsha Hargis, will be retiring from her treasurer duties on June the 1st, 2020. Marsha has been our treasurer for almost eight years. She has been a fabulous person to work with in all things financial, and we are going to miss her personality, her skills, and her wisdom. Please express your appreciation to Marsha for her years of service to Bethany Church as our treasurer. The good news is that God has sent us Kathy Rains to follow Marsha. Marsha and Kathy have been meeting together and working together to ensure a smooth transition. Please offer your warmth and your welcome to Kathy as she comes on board. The position of treasurer, as you know, has been a paid position in recent years. Kathy has asked to serve as a volunteer not as a staff person receiving a salary. So, the position of treasurer is no longer a paid position, and it returns to being a volunteer church office. Thank you, Kathy, for your gracious willingness to serve Christ and His church. In other elections, Nancy Orth, our chairperson of Church and Society, returns to being a council member Jackie Hampton is elected to the staff Pastor Parish Relations Class of 2020. Susanna Hogg and Kat White are elected to staff Pastor Parish Relations Class of 2022. Nancy Cooper is elected to Nominations Class of 2021. And Sandy Riggin is elected as our new church historian. Lastly, I want to say that our new Congregational Care Prayer Tree is running smoothly as we stay connected and help each other. Hi kids, Pastor Mike here again with the children's story. I was making dinner earlier this week that required an onion in a recipe. And it got me to thinking, why does cutting an onion make me cry? Why tears? I mean, when I eat dark chocolate, I feel, ha. Ah. And if I have warm soup, it makes me feel warm inside. So why does the onion make my tears roll and my eyes water? Why doesn't it make my tongue feel strange, or my fingertips buzz. Well, what I learned was that not everybody tears up when they cut an onion. I do, <laughs> but not everybody. I also learned that to chop onions without tears, chill the onion for about 20 minutes. So I wondered, how come my tear ducts go so crazy, or nuts, or onions, when I peel them? It makes me cry. Well, I learned that there's an oil or a juice that comes out of this onion when you cut it. And that's what irritates my eyes. That's what produces tears. You know, tears can mean a lot of things. Tears can come when you're very excited, when you laugh too hard, or when you're hurt, or when you're sad. You know, we hear a lot about happiness and love in the church. We hear a lot about peace and joy, and we should. But we don't talk a lot about sadness, and we don't talk a lot about grief. But sadness and grief can cause tears. Both of them are very real emotions that we all experience at one time or another. And different things can cause us grief. We grieve when someone important to us dies, or we grieve when a pet dies. We grieve when we lose an important friendship. God made us so that we can express this grief. And then, when we have cried, we realize that with God's help, we pick ourselves up, we start our lives again, 
and trust God to know what is best for us. You know, you might be grieving because we can't be together at church like we have been. And that can cause you to feel sad. It's sort of like grief. We miss it. You may miss worshiping at church and being in your Sunday school class and being with your friends so much that you do cry. And it's okay to cry. One thing about this onion, it still makes me cry. But the tears wash the irritating oil out of my eyes. Let real tears help clean the sadness from your heart and from your mind. And then trust God to help us all get along with our lives and lead us to action, which is always a good thing. Will you pray after me? Dear Jesus, thank you for creating us with tears. Help us when the tears are through to bring us back up and give us a good work to do for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to provide an offering minute today. We celebrate Pentecost as part of the three days that changed our lives forever. Christmas and Easter and Pentecost. And you'll notice today that our chancel pyramids and my stole are red to remind us of the Holy Spirit. Our pyramids are handmade by the people of Bethany Church. And you'll see that it also has the symbol on my stole of the United Methodist Church, the cross and the flame. So literally, today, I wear the church and wear the Holy Spirit. And this symbolizes that the church is much more than a building. The church is the people of God gathered today in so many homes and in so many places and so many different times. It's about us allowing God into our lives and then sharing God's love and truth and joy with others. Your tithes and your offerings allow all of us to do that, to underwrite ministries and salaries, utilities, all of it for the glory of God. I want to thank you for your faithful stewardship of time and ability and money and prayer that enables us to be the church. And while we are not yet open for public, in-person sanctuary worship like we are all used to, and all of us miss being together so much, we are open in terms of loving others and in terms of helping and reaching out to our members and to our neighbors and our community. The U.S. Postal Service is also open, and they are still in business, and they will deliver envelopes wherever you address them. I invite you to lend your support. I know that some people have lost jobs or are on furlough and simply cannot afford to give more or perhaps give anything. I want you to know that's all right. I do ask that you communicate that to us so that we will know and make adjustments as we need to. It's all right. I also want to make a gentle request that in the month of June that you prayerfully consider giving your whole offering to the general fund. You have been so generous to the pastor's discretionary fund this year. We really have enough in the pastor's discretionary fund. When that changes, I'll be the first to announce it, and I'll be the first to let you know. So thank you for considering my request. Our hymn of preparation is found in our hymnal, 
Number 334, Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Our scripture this morning is taken from Acts chapter 17, verses 29 through 34. Being then God's offspring, we ought not think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, a representation by art or the imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now God commands all persons everywhere to repent. Because God has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by one that he has given. One whom he has appointed. And this one given is assurance to all people because he raised him from the dead. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. But others said, we will hear you again about this. So Paul went out from among them. But some joined him and believed, among them Dionysus the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to give a title to my message, and the title is this, Three Responses. That you can give to the gospel. Athens in Paul's days was one of the most famous centers of religion and art and architecture and philosophy that the ancient world had ever known. Many scholars say that when Paul was there that he was stepping into a population of a hundred thousand people. He preached and taught in two places. The synagogue, which was where the Jews congregated, and the marketplace where the Gentiles gathered. And Paul spoke of the God who created the heavens and the earth and everything in them as the master architect which got the attention of many in the crowd that day. And Paul spoke of Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the only son of the Father, given by the Father to all and his earthly ministry, how he died and was resurrected by God's power. And who is now in glory and will come again. And they listened to Paul. And I imagine that there are three ways a person then and now can respond to the good news of Jesus Christ. Which we call the gospel. The first one we find in verse 32. You can mock. You can scoff. The scripture says that when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, they scoffed. Perhaps they muttered under their breath. Maybe they said it loudly. Oh, that's ridiculous. Impossible. That's silly. There's a second response. You can wait. We also find that in verse 32. To think about it. To ponder it some. They said to Paul that day, We will hear you again on this. Perhaps the heart was ready, but not the mind. Or the mind was ready, but not the will. We don't know. There's a third response. It's found in verse 34. You can believe. The text tells us that some joined them 
and became believers and were given their names. Notice it does not say that they had all the answers. They were simply willing to go forward with what they did have. This text and this message speaks to me on several levels. Because I live in a world and you live in a world that has many gods and that still worships an unknown God. I live in a world, and you live in a world, where some still scoff. Some just hear the gospel and go, later. And some believe. And it makes me think that every person has his or own grid of resistance responding to the gospel. Some things come easier than others. The Epicureans in Paul's day, they couldn't quite agree with the resurrection. The citizens of Athens, they say, well, gee, why give up all the other gods? This is good for business. And I think that every person also has his or her own grid of acceptance, too. The trust, maybe, that one has in a person who shares the gospel or the example of their life. Maybe it's a personal experience or more, a revelation that happens in life. Or just that inward work that occurs as we grow and mature. Whether it's intellectual or emotional, and most likely it's a combination of both. Let me go back to the resistance thing. We all have our limits, right? I have to tell a story. It's a funny story. And yes, I'm going to retell it. And yes, I'm going to embellish it. Sherry and I were dating. And I felt like she could be the one. We talk about this all the time. She just fit like a glove. But in my mind, in my heart, I still wondered if there might be some resistance on her part. How much could she bear being married to me? How much could she bear being married to a pastor? And as I recall, the conversation went something like this. I said, you know, I can't be out late on Saturday night. And she said, I can bear that. It's okay. I'm not a big, big Saturday night person. I said, I'm on call 24-7. I work Sundays. My weekends are not my own. She said, I understand. I I, I can bear that too. See, her father was a dentist, and so Sherry saw how things can happen and plans have to be delayed or even rescheduled. I said, well, people are going to throw stereotypes at you. They're going to expect you to be able to play the piano or be a secretary or head up a major ministry. She said, I love Jesus, and I know who I am and who I am not. If you support me, we'll be okay. And then me, dumb me, I asked the question. I said, I'm going to need the TV remote at least four nights a week. And she said, that tears it. I can't bear that at all. No way. You got another thing coming. You know, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's weird preaching to a, Uh, empty pews. Uh, But I know you're getting a big laugh at home. I'll take comfort in that. Even though I can't hear you, I know you like that one a lot. That second response, to wait. You know, as God knows, and as Paul knew, we are all works in progress. And the point is that we do progress. They said to Paul that day, they said, We'll hear more about this later. It takes time to process this stuff. Rome wasn't built in a day. Neither is faith. And at Bethany, we take this to heart. We help build faith in the Lord. It's crucial that you have your own time with God because only one hour a week on Sunday morning doesn't cut it. Not in this world. And all of us miss in-person sanctuary worship. And we long for the day when we can return to worship the Lord together and be in fellowship. It's crucial to have this time together. Here's another thing. This shows us that God allows His Word to go forth and to be planted and nurtured and to bear fruit. That's the way it is. That's the way it happens. And some will sneer. And some will postpone their decision and both do so at their own peril. And people will also come to faith and believe in Christ and the gospel 
the good news of Christ. Jesus said, come and follow me. This text also reminds me that we are to be bridge builders, not a builder of walls. At Bethany, my desire is to minister to the entire family, ministry with and to all generations. Paul was building bridges that day across cultures, across different beliefs, and yet he retained his own faith and shared his own faith, and the Holy Spirit would use it to reach some, and the Spirit did. One thing that the Spirit impressed upon my heart in this was Paul's method. His method was conversation and sharing, not debate and ultimatums. Paul didn't attack them for their philosophies or their practices or their rituals or their superstitions. Paul said, I perceive that you are a very religious people. And then he simply shared the truth about Jesus. In some ways, I think America is like Athens. We are the land of many There is more information than we can possibly process. We have choices galore. We can do what Paul did. He looked for the good opportunity. Paul saw thousands of altars and thousands of statues of deities. And he found one altar, an altar to an unknown God. A God whose presence they felt but they couldn't quite comprehend or tame, who seemed far away and yet still felt very close, seemed to be drawing them close. And Paul said, this is the one that I proclaim to you, the God who has come near, the God who has lived among you. Here's another thing. I'll make this the last thing. Paul could reference the culture without being drawn into it. In other words, Paul did not have to agree with the philosophy of the Athenians to share God's love and message of hope and salvation. We don't have to condone everything in culture that we see on TV, that we read about in the newspapers. We don't have to condone everything to earn the right to express our faith and to show God's love. It's never too late to be kind. It's never too late to be loving toward one another. Here's, I want to leave you with a question to think about. First of all, these three responses. Where are you? Where do you find yourself? The second is this. We talked about a grid of resistance and a grid of acceptance. So take a moment and just ask yourself, what pieces of the gospel, what pieces of the Christian life do you find yourself resisting? And what pieces and parts of the gospel in the Christian life, whether they be beliefs or events or whatever they might be, which ones are easier for you to accept than others? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is Blessed Assurance. Again, if you have a hymnal, it's found on page 367.
Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen.